Hello all, uh, welcome to this uh, instrumentation lab uh, parts 3 and 4. Uh, in during uh, the lectures, I was teaching you about uh, how you build the, uh, I mean the, the principle of the Wheatstone's bridge circuit and how that is used to build strain gauges and from strain gauges to load cell. Okay. So, today in this lab, we have uh, Mr. Prabhu and uh, Mr. Barani, uh, who will be showing you how to build uh, the uh, Wheatstone's bridge circuit taking from strain gauges. Okay. So, the Wheatstone's bridge circuit will be attached to um, uh, a rectangular uh, bar type uh, uh, device, which will make uh, a bar type load cell. And then later on, you will also see how to uh, calibrate your, your load cell. Okay. Today, we are going to see the design and construction of load cell using strain cages. So, strain cage is a simple resistive element. By using this, we can construct simple load cell. The load cell construction made by using this, the simple circuit diagram. For doing this, we need to have a strain cages, two number of strain cages, two number of strain cages, aluminum plate, and basic accessories. So, these are the basic accessories need for doing that construction work. So, in this setup, the circuit we can go for multiple combination. So, by using the same strain gauge, we can construct a quarter bridge as well as the half bridge as well as full bridge combination also we can make. For today experimental work, we are going to construct the half bridge combination and after that we are going to test the output with the strain meter. Finally, we are going to calibrate the constructed load cell. So, now we are going to look how the load cell construct into the aluminum plate. With the aluminum plate, we are going to construct our load cell. So, before sticking into the aluminum plate, we need to rub the surface area for proper fixing. By using some sandpaper, we can able to rub the surface area once the surface is area is steady yes we are going to mark the strain gauge position for that we are going to mark the center point Once the center point is marked, we have to make one straight line. That is it. The same to be repeated to the opposite side also. So, now the marking is completed. So, this is our marking area. This is our exact center position of our strain cage. Both the, both the surface area we mark the center position. After marking, we are going to stick the strain cage. With the help of 
transparent tape we carefully take into the strain cage in, into the transparent tape then we will apply glue on the center mark position so once it's complete we have to carefully align the center position with the strain cage once the position is fixed we have to stick and with the anti stick paper we have to give a little pressure on the top of the strain cage to stick properly into the aluminum surface okay after sticking you have to give a gentle pressure on the strain cage so it will help to stick properly the same procedure after removing the anti stick paper you have to gently remove the outer line transparent tape then you have to take off the leads the strain cage leads carefully this anyway should not to touch with the aluminum plate you have to ensure the leads should not touch with the aluminum surface area same procedure we have to repeat it for the back side also the second side the back side also we did the same see now now the front elevation we have stick one at the same back side we have stick one more uh, strain cages the leads we already take out so now we are going to fix a connecting terminal to take up the wiring so connecting terminal is a simple connecting point our micro lead can be attached with this connecting terminal from the terminal only we are going to draw our wirings so now we are pasting the connecting terminal using same glue okay with the help of fuser we hold the connecting terminal that will apply to the glue and will stick into the aluminum plate at the specific points once it is stick apply the little glue into the surrounding area so it may help to proper sticking into the surface location so that's it so now the connecting terminal is now the connecting terminal is fixed into the aluminum plate now we are going to soldering the things using multi strand wires with the help of soldering station so now i'll switch on the soldering station just i'll wait for some few minutes to heat up the rod so this is our soldering lead so soldering paste once the rod is get heat up it's ready for making solder so now we'll start our soldering work just apply the little bit soldering lead down the connecting terminal once 
once it apply it will be looking like this then connect the strain cage lead into the So now this we are going to align the strain cage leads into the connecting terminal. Now the leads soldered into the connecting terminal point. So that's it. We have to do carefully. There is no point in to have dry soldering. Second terminal also need to be aligned carefully, then it to be soldered into the connecting terminal. Both the terminal points soldered into the contact terminal, excess lead can be cut. So the excess leads removed. So now it will be looking like this. So the same we are going to repeat into the back side. So now the back side also the strain cage placed at the exact center position. So like the front one. So now the front as well as the back side, the strain cage is fixed. Now we are going to lay the wirings by using multi-stand wire. As per this circuit diagram. We have to mark the positions in our half bridge combination. The multi stand wires simply stripped out to the leads. Our Half bridge combination, it have the three wire system. So there are as per the circuit diagram, just we will mark the position one, two, two, three, four, and five. Here. 2 and 3 is a common point, 1 and 4 is our excitation. As per this laying, we are going to fix the wires For the common point, we are using the different color to differentiate from other terminals. Here we are using the blue wire to make the common position.
for the hop bridge three wire system with this we are readily have the three wires as per marked points by using soldering rod this will simply connect into our connecting terminals so the our first wire is connected to the terminal 1 here for making common point with the second wire we are connecting our common blue wire also the combination wire will go to the two and three common points the common wire will go back to the back side for looping this will be the same two and three common point for the back side so it connected now the third wire taken from the last lead that's it so now our wiring hmm. so now as per the circuit diagram the terminal 1 2 3 4 here 2 and 3 connected together from the 2 and 3 we are take out the common leads from the 1 and 4 we are take out the first and last lead so now here we have total three wires for making the half bridge combination now the setup we are going to connect with the strain meter now here we have our strain meter so this meter can be used to measure the strains for multiple combination of bridges like quarter bridge half bridge as well as full bridge also we can directly measure the strain from any load set now we are going to connect our constructed load cell to the any bench here for calibration which we should fix the one end permanently second it will be free so like this by using the c clamp we have to fix 
at the same time we are connecting the three leads so like this our hop bridge combination need to be connect like this our hop bridge combination is connected to the strain cage once we have to ensure our terminals is connected properly into the strain meter now our constructed load cell fixed into for the calibration position our three terminal wires it's going to the our strain meter first lead going to the first portion the co common one will go to the b position the final the last lead is going to the c position as per the configuration to the strain meter we connected into half bridge mode so now the setup is ready now just manually we are cross checking whether our constructor load cell giving any outputs or not so now i am gently applying some load through my hand so the strain is increasing so it is gradually increasing so our connection our strain is fixing all is working perfectly as well as left the reverse as well as the negative direction also our uh, our strain cage that the aluminum plate is working perfectly now we are going to calibrate the same with the known weights yeah now we are just gently checking once again our readings are coming perfectly positive side as well as negative side also it's reflecting for properly okay so now the load cell is ready here after we are going to just calibrate the our load cell by using span it's a loading pan the loading pan we are going to connect like this so once the setup is ready here after we are going to add our known weights at the same time we are going to note down what is the exact output is coming in the strain meter so once the pan is added we have to make it zero initially due to dead weight it's giving some uh, due to dead weight it's giving some value now we are making to zero so we made zero with this condition we have to make on tabulation now our setup is now our setup is ready before going to start the calibration we have to make like on tabulation so here load versus strain already we have a standard weights in the range of 200 400 600 800 and 1 kg and 1.2 kg so the output side we are going to measure directly strain the terms of micro strain now we will start the calibration so now the entire setup is ideal condition even our output also in equal to zero now i am applying the other uh, variation to equal to zero now i am applying the first 
200 grams to the loading pan corresponding output i can able to read in the strain meter it's coming around 185 micro strain the same value the corresponding output it displays as 185 so it's roughly it's going 186 87 so repeatedly 186 is displays so we note down the strain value as 186 into our tabulation so the first reading is note down the same second 200 gram applied into the loading pan so the now the corresponding output displays into the strain meter now the value will be around 372 micro strain the same data will be noted down into our tabulation next next the same range of 200 grams applied into the pan corresponding output displays into the strain meter it's it's coming around 558 micro strain same value will note down to the tabulation 558 micro strain now the next step same 200 gram applied into the pan our uh, strain output will be 742 micro strain we'll note down the same value in the tabulation 742 the same step we are repeating in the range of 200 grams just i'm apply into the same the corresponding reading around 928 micro strain it's displayed on the strain meter the reflective strain reading will be noted down into our tabulation 929 micro strain so this is our last 200 gram range we are applying into the pan so now the total weight will be 1.2 kg our corresponding reading will be 1116 micro strain it's it's roughly varying one or two micro strain not a few roughly going 1819 so the average value will take us as 1119 now we are repeating the same for unloading so now we are start the unloading process we are going to unload the weights in the range of 200 grams corresponding output we are note down into the our tabulation so the first unloading of first 200 gram the reading will be 937 micro strain and second 200 gram is unloaded corresponding reading is around 755 micro strain the same will will note down in the tabulation same will be repeated 
the third 200 gram is unloaded the readings are not down it's around 571 microstrine okay the next same 200 gram unloading is done the corresponding value of 387 microstrine 387 microstrine the value note down into the tabulation 387 the same will be repeated for the unloading of 200 grams corresponding strain value will be 203 microstrain so the value will be noted down in the tabulation 2 so finally we are removing the last one the last 200 gram so now our plan will be the empty like a zero load even our strain meter also should show the zero uh, but due to some uh, uh, innumerable strains it shows some uh, it shows some uh, default strain values so around 17 uh, while taking the average value it will be neutralized the unloading condition only for cross checking whether the we are same value will be repeated or not so anyway equally equal points will be reflecting as well as the input as well as the output loading and unloading condition there are a uh, fire sound micro signs may varying during the loading as well as unloading but due to this aluminum surfacing on sticking two three parameters is there Mm. so the variation may be due to this aluminum plate that sticking kill or uh, some leads terminal points or something so that will be negligible only so now our known weights data as well as the strain value directly we are note down into the tabulation with this we are going to plot the graph for the value of load versus strain so here we have our input and output data this input and output data we are plot into the x and y graphs here we already have that plotted graphs x and y axis in the x axis we are note down our loading values in the terms of grams 200 400 600 until 1 1.2 kg it's no down same as well as the y direct y axis the strain value has no down in the range of 100 100 200 300 400 so until we are no down for 1100 micro strain the corresponding input and output data just we are pointing the point out our locations in the graph we are no down the points so there are six points we know we got the all six points we marked into the graph so finally just we are making the straight line for all six so now our straight line data points we obtain from this from the delta x by delta y we can able to obtain our calibration value of our constructed load set that's it so, so here 
we designed and constructed the load cell and we fixed all the load cell using strain cages. The calibration also we have completed the data points we note down through the graph. Finally, we got calibration value of our customized load cell. Here the simple application of the load cell for our real time, our weighing bridge, our weighing machines, all are all the simple example for load cell. That is it. Thank you.